Hello guys, welcome to drilling-academy.com Overburden is part of IWCF well control and some may struggle with it. To help out those may in need, please allow me to present you the full explanation of overburden and associated calculations. After this 15 minutes, you must start guaranteed. So the first question is, what is overburden pressure? The unit is PSI. The definition is, it is the pressure exerted at a depth by the total weight of the overlying formation solid rock matrix and the weight of the fluid contained in the pore space of the rock. The combined density is called formation bulk density or bulk density and the measurement unit is PPG and remember overburden varies with depth and types of formation so how to calculate overburden pressure in PSI let's call OB is the overburden in PSI here. The classic formula is 0 0.052 times the bulk density as we mentioned before in the previous slide times the TVD of the depth of interest. And remember don't forget about these two conversion formulas. Density in PPC equates gradient in PSI per foot divided by 0.052 and the gradient in PSI per foot equals 0.433 times gradient expressed in gram per cubic centimeter. So how to determine the overburden gradient OG expressed in PSI per foot at a point of interest? This is the formula. Right, you have the porosity of the formation. You take the porosity is in percentage. Take you take one minus the percentage of porosity times the rock matrix gradient in psi per foot, then plus the porosity times the formation fluid gradient. This formation fluid is the formation fluid contained in the rock. <laughs> right, the rock matrix gradient is also called grain gradient it is measured in psi per foot if all of the matrix gradient and the formation fluid gradient are given to you in gram per cubic centimeter then you use 0.433 this is the conversion factor all right and use the same formula and remember now the measurement unit is in gram per centimeter these are the formulas you need to work out the overburden gradient in PSI per foot or in gram per cubic centimeter. So next question is why do we need to buy the overburden? Why do we need to calculate it? The answer is to determine the maximum mud weight, not to fracture the formation usually at the shallow shoe depth. This is the shallow shoe depth here. This is usually the wicked, weakest part, right? So this is an offshore rig. This is the formula for offshore rig, all right? You work out the overburden in PSI. You take the water depth times the gradient of the seawater. This is seawater here, all right? And you take the depth of the shoe. Here is the shoe depth. You minus the water depth minus the air gap to get this depth here of the formation here times the overburden gradient right then you take the overburden in psi you minus the anticipated annular pressure loss at shoe here you divide it by shoe tvd times 0 0.052 to get the mud weight this is the maximum allowable mud weight not to exceed the fracture not to break the fracture here at shoe in case the APL is neglected, 
are not mentioned, you can take it as zero. And for line width, which is a lot easier, you don't have water depth, you don't have air depth, just take it straight away. It should typically times the over burden gradient in pieces per foot. And then you use the same formula here, with this same formula as before. And again, if IPM is neglected or not mentioned, you take it as zero. And you work out the mid weight. That's not going to fracture the shoe, shoe depth. And this example here gives you an offshore rig with the air gap 100 foot water depth 900 feet. Formation we have one formation here, formation A, the thickness of it is 2500 feet. We have formation B, the thickness is 3500 feet, and we have a gas gap here. The thickness of the gas is 500 feet, and the gas, the gas gradient is 0.1 psi per foot. All right, see what the gradient we take it as 0.45 psi per foot. The formation A strength is 0.465 psi per foot. This is the overburdened gradient. This one is the overburdened gradient of formation A. Okay, and this is also formation strength B has strength 0.7 psi per foot. This is the overburdened gradient of formation B. Right. So the, the question is, you calculate what is the pressure at the top of the gas cap. Number step number one, you work out the overburden pressure at the bottom hole. This is the bottom hole here, right? Work it out. All right, you use you take the water depth time to see what the gradient plus formation one, formation A depth D one times its Strength, which is overburdened gradient, 2500 times 0.465, plus the thickness of formation B here, times its strength, which is 0.7 psi per foot. This is the overburdened gradient formation B. So the workout here is 4018 psi. Now, inside the gas cap is the gas. The gas has gradient of 0.1 psi per foot. You work out the pressure inside the gas cap here, the pressure of the gas in here. Pressure in here is acting against around the gas cap. So you work out 0.1 times 500 equals 50 psi. This is the pressure of the gas inside the gas cap. So the pressure at the top of the gas is you take the overburden and you minus the counteracting gas pressure inside the gas cap. So 4018 psi minus 50 and you have 3968 psi. This is the pressure acting on top of the gas cap. Next question is you are drilling with 9.0 ppg mud inside the roof screen all the way from the rig floor down to depth 4,500 feet. Now, let's say if you shut in the well, what is the maximum surface pressure upon shutting? If you have any sign of well fit, right? So, first you work out the overburden at 4,500 feet. Here is 4,500 feet here. Work out the OB here. You take water depth times, see what the gradient. You take the first formation A times its strength, and then at 4,500 feet, you have to minus all these above depth, which is the air gap, minus the water depth, and minus the thickness of formation A, right? And you times the strength of formation B. This is the formula here, right? You work it out is 2260 psi. Then you work out the hydrostatic pressure of the mud inside the drill spring. Right? You take 0 0.052 times 9 times 4500 psi equate 2106 psi. So you take the overburden, deduct the hydrostatic pressure of the mud, then you have 162. This is the maximum anticipated shooting pressure at the wellhead. Right. 
of right and the max example is to calculate the maximum birth weight not to exceed not to fracture the shoe here again we use same example and gap and gap 100 feet water depth 900 feet the formation a has thickness of 2020 feet now and you're gonna you're gonna set the shoe before you go into the next formation right this is our conventional practice all right what is the question is what is the maximum birth weight not to fracture the shoe here so first step you work out the overburden pressure as shoe you take the water depth times see water gradient here and then you take the shoe tvd minus the water depth minus air gap times the formation strength which is over burden gradient this here is formation strength 0.7 is the overburden gradient okay you work out here here you have 1805 psi then here they give you the anticipated APL annular pressure loss about 70 psi you apply this formula you take overburden minus APL divided by true DVD and times 0 0.052. You have 11.12. You need to you have to round it down. Don't round it up in as human. For this thing, you round it down. So you have 11.1 ppc is the maximum mud weight not to fracture the shoe. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you understand all the calculation and the explanation. If you have any questions or queries or recommendations, don't hesitate to address them to my personal email address at lich.tran01 at yahoo.com.se. See you soon in the next session. Bye.